In today's video guys, we're going to look at how to create a simple callout like this, track it in two different ways, and also animate it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, dive right in. Okay, so we have our four second clip here. And the first thing we're going to do is to take it directly to the Fusion page. And here we're going to start by changing the viewer to dual screen. This will allow us to view the callout design and also the final output at the same time. All right, let's start by bringing a background node into the node editor. Let's also bring in a ellipse masking node, connect the masking node to the background node, and then let's project the background node onto the left viewer. The first thing we will do here is to bring down the width and height parameters, move it over that little piece of fruit that you see on the screen. And then to turn this into the outer ring that you see in the callout design, we're going to uncheck solid option there and then start uh, to bring up the border width uh, just a touch. And then the last thing we're going to do is to change the color uh, to something that will make it pop. The next thing we're going to do is to make a copy of these two nodes and then paste them. Then we're going to uh, connect this new background node back to the previous background node, then project this new merge node onto the left viewer. Now let's go to this new ellipse masking node. What we're going to do here is to turn this into uh, that little dot within the outer ring. And to do that, we're going to bring back solid first. So let's uh, check it. Then let's also create an expression for what the width uh, setting there. Let's link it to uh, the height setting. So this will allow the width setting to change at the same time as height. So let's start by bringing down the height setting uh, just a little bit there. So that's looking good. And then let's also go back to the uh, previous uh, ellipse masking node as well, and then change the setting there until the proportion looks right. So uh, yeah, this is looking good. We're going to uh, stick with this design. All right, so the next thing we're going to create is the line that shoots out from the dot. So let's go ahead and make a copy of the background node, paste it, and then connect it back to the merge node. Let's also project this new merge node onto the left viewer. Then let's uh, bring in a polygon masking node and then connect it to this new background node. So let's uh, get started on the drawing. So we're going to start uh, near the center of the dot. And then uh, also a tip here, guys, if you want to draw a perfectly straight line, simply hold down the shift key. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is just to bring up the border width uh, just a little bit there. So let's do that. Um, so that's, uh, that's looking good. And uh, we can also change the line style as well. So let's change it from curved uh, to flat. Now to wrap up our callout design, the next thing we're going to do is to add our text element. So let's go ahead and bring in the text node, connect it to the merge node, and then let's project this new merge node onto the left viewer. Now let's go to the text node. The first thing we'll do here is to write our text, and then uh, we're going to go to the shading tab. And then uh, in the shading tab, the first thing we'll do there is to bring up the select element menu, select number four. This will add a border around our text. So let's enable it, and then let's uh, go ahead and change the color of the border first uh, by matching to the color that we're using for the rest of the design. So that's good. And then uh, the next thing we'll do is just to bring up extend horizontal and extend vertical. This will create a full box around uh, the text. Okay, so once that is done, let's just go back to number one under select element. We'll change the color of the text here to contrast with the border color. All right, and then uh, the last thing we'll do is just to bring uh, this uh, text on top of the line there. And then uh, that's pretty much it, guys, for the design of our callout. So to track our callout, we're going to look at a couple different ways of doing it. The first of which is to track our entire design here. And to do that, let's go ahead and connect this whole thing uh, to media in one. This will composite our callout design as the foreground to our video. Now, all we need to do at this point is to take advantage of the tracker feature within the merge node to track our callout. And to do that, the first thing we'll do is to go to the center setting, right click, and then in the menu, go to modify with, select tracker position. This will open up the modifiers tab, and then that's going to be where our tracker is located. So let's go there. And then uh, the first thing we'll do is to move our track box over that little piece of fruit. Uh, I think it's a grapefruit. Um, but anyway, let's also adjust the search area as well. And once that is done, we're going to change the adaptive mode. 
uh, to best match. And then uh, now with our playhead positioned at the very first frame, we can just go ahead and uh, click track from the current frame. And then uh, once the tracking is complete, now guys, let's just go ahead and have a look at what it looks like so far. So in terms of the tracking result, I am happy with it. I think it looks pretty good. The only thing we need to do now is to move the position of the call out. So to do that, let's uh, go ahead and come back to the modifiers tab, bring up track one. Now here we're gonna adjust the X offset and the Y offset settings. This will offset the position of the call out relative to the track data. So once that is complete, let's take this whole thing guys back to the edit page let the effect render. So uh, yeah, guys, if we have a look at it now, it looks really good. And I think uh, now we're ready to uh, look at the second way of tracking. All right, let's come back to the Fusion page. And the first thing we're gonna do here is to erase all this tracking data. We're going to start with a clean slate and let's go ahead and make sure that this is indeed the case. So that looks good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do guys is to track all these three elements at the bottom of the call out, which are the outer ring, the dot, as well as the bottom point of the straight line. And everything else is going to stay the same. But the good news is that we only need to track one element and we're going to start with the outer ring. So let's come to the first ellipse masking node and we're going to track it the way we did earlier by going to the center setting, right click in the menu, go to modify with select tracker position. Now, what you will notice differently this time is that uh, we don't have a tracker source. So the first thing we'll do here is to drag and drop media in one into tracker source. Now this way our system is going to know where to look. Okay, so let's also adjust the tracker box as well as the search area. And then uh, let's also change the adaptive mode to a best match. And with our plate head positioned at the very first frame, we can just go ahead and click track from the current frame. So now guys, what you will notice is that only the outer ring is being tracked. And the great thing is that this tracking data, we can just use it for all the other elements. So it's going to be uh, pretty easy from this point on. Okay, that looks good guys. And we're going to uh, stick with this. So let's come to our second ellipse masking node. We are going to the center setting once again, but instead of going to modify with, we're gonna go to connect to, and then under track one, let's select tracker position. So now all the tracking data will get applied to this dot as well. So you will see now the dot as well as the ring are moving in sync and that's perfect. So let's come to now our third element, which is the polygon masking node. But here we only want to select the bottom point. And to do that, the first thing we will do is to change the mode to modify only. So let's do that. And now this will allow us to select only this bottom point. And once that is selected, we're gonna go ahead and right click. And in the menu, we're gonna go to polyline. And then uh, we're gonna go to publish. And then in the menu, we're going to select publish points. So now what this will do is to publish the position data of this point in the inspector. So now, as you can see, we have a new setting here and all we need to do is to right click and now go to connect to and then under track one, let's select tracker position. So now this data will get applied to only this bottom point. So if we uh, have a look guys right now, all these points are moving in sync. So now let's come back to the edit page, let the effect render and yeah, guys, this is our second way of tracking. Uh, what's different about this one is that we're only tracking certain elements of the design, and I think it looks fantastic. So with all the tracking done, let's go ahead and now look at how to animate our callout design. All right, let's come back to the Fusion page and we're going to get started on the first element, which is the ring. And we're going to go to the first ellipse masking node. Let's go ahead and the keyframe the length setting but we're going to bring it all the way down to zero at this point. And then uh, we're going to move our playhead over to the 12th frame and a keyframe length setting again, but by bring it all the way up to one. Okay, now let's move on to the second element. Uh, we're going to have this one start at the fourth frame. Then uh, we're going to keyframe the height setting 
and let's also move our playhead now to the uh, 16th frame there then keyframe height setting again then go to the first one and bring the height setting all the way down to zero all right now on to the third one uh, let's have this one start uh, at uh, the uh, 10th frame okay so now we are going to keyframe the length setting uh, again uh, but make sure that it's at zero at this point and then now we're going to move our playhead over to the 22nd uh, frame then now we're going to keyframe the length setting again but but bring it all the way up to one okay so now the only thing we need to do is to animate the text and we're going to do that by bringing a rectangle masking node connected to text let's make sure that first of all the rectangle masking node is positioned slightly outside the text uh, and then we're going to have this one start at i would say the 17th frame so that's a good starting point then uh, let's just keyframe the center um, the setting there uh, and then let's move our playhead over to the 26th frame then make sure that our rectangle masking node at this point is all the way over to the left so that we can see our entire text okay so let's take it back to the edit page and let this whole thing render and guys this is pretty much it so now we have a call out that is not only tracked but also animated so i hope this tutorial helps and as always i will see you next time